Okay, in this video, we'll talk a little bit about permissions for administrators to make any changes to volunteer accounts. So there was some question about how much control uh, an administrator might have over a volunteer's accounts. And that, of course, depends on the volunteer. But in a case, for instance, where the organization is creating the volunteer's account, the organization starts with complete editor or login rights to that volunteer and then the volunteer can manage how they want that those rights to continue whether they want them to continue or not so let's give you an example of what that looks like the amount of control and how organizations will be able to log in or edit as volunteers and how that can be really helpful for organizations so let's have a quick look here let's say we wanted to add a volunteer and we'll put them on Saturday reading. So let's call them uh, Community Care Volunteer 1. Um, doesn't really matter. And let's now give them an email address. Um, this is not going to actually verify the address, but this is in a case where, for instance, the volunteer uh, may not have um, any wish to do um, any kind of business by, by using email or the app or it may be that a volunteer is completely comfortable with the organization making changes on their behalf. So it's quite a wide range of, of possibilities there. And let's just make a, an email address that doesn't really matter. Now we've created Community Care Volunteer 1. Let's go ahead and create that. Now notice that in our volunteer tab, we have several different um, icons here. So Barney Rubble, um, Fred and Wilma are all active. Barney I can edit as and CCV1 of course I can edit as because I've just created that account. Um, Fred and Wilma I'm not able to edit on their behalf. So let's see what it looks like for Barney. Now notice how these are dark and responsive which means I would be able to get a new quick pin on Barney's behalf if he'd like. I can also go ahead and modify some of these settings. Now in comparison uh, in Fred's account I'm not able to make any changes, which means I'm locked out of that. So that's what it looks like. Now, in the case of CCV1, if I would like to log in as this volunteer, all I need to do is to give them a username so that we can log in that way. Notice that once we've put it here, we just need to go down and click Save. And what that means is, is that now as the organization, we will be able to log in uh, or edit on their behalf. Now, let me just um, quickly refresh the account here and then we'll go back and we'll be able to see the volunteers. Now don't forget CCV1 is the name of the new volunteer. Now let's say that volunteer said I would love to do volunteering for you but let's say I don't want to use email. I, I prefer if you phone me but I would like to have a notification by email. Um, say 24 hours before, but I don't want to have to do anything except um, look at the reminder. So what we can do now is because we've created the account and because it now has a username and we're still able to edit, we can go and log in as that person, CCV1. Notice that they come up in the drop down menu. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now notice we've changed to their account. Um, we have, of course, access to their dashboard, but we also have access to their profile. So we could make changes here. And more importantly, we could make changes that will help them with that reminder notice they're looking for. So we could change this to, say, 24 hours, so 1,440 minutes. That's their request. I'd love to be able to receive a notification one day before about my shift. Great. We can set that on your behalf. Click on Save. Now what that means is, is those changes have been made and the email will go out to the email address that's set. So let's go back then and schedule them for that shift. Let's just return to the previous account. We're now back as the administrative account. The volunteer is here. We still have access. And then what we can do is, if we go down to the shift editor and say we have a, a shift, an upcoming reading shift, we know that's what they're interested in. And they said, please schedule me. And can you please make sure I get an email 24 hours before? We've scheduled the notification email on their behalf. Let's go ahead and add them to that account. So we can just do CCV1 and 
schedule them for that shift. Since they've actually verbally told us over the phone that they'd like to do that, we'll just go ahead and do that um, and accept on their behalf. And you'll notice now, of course, the shift has turned green. They've accepted and the way the system is set now, they'll receive an email 24 hours in advance.